Yeah, we, uh, we, 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 yeah. we go through showing how to find, use legal news to find properties. We go through okay. um, you know, different places like land bank, tax sales, um, mm -hmm. clearing title, quieting title. Um, we cover a lot. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, but it's, it, and we'd love to have people like yourself, Randy. I love, I mean, wholesalers are very big part of the business because a lot of people just don't know how to find them very well or don't have the time. I mean, wholesalers right. have a very important role in what I do. To do better in their business, but I also have to. I don't know how to do it. But um, so we'll get back to uh, with, you know, you're talking about your, you know, so that kind of we, we went through scenario one and it kind of leads into scenario two, which is uh, somebody who who has their own business. They, they're a 1099, you know, um, they have, but they just don't have a W-2. I'm assuming you'd recommend the same program for them as well. Oh yeah, we we don't even ask if you have a job, Randy. Right. Okay. I, mean, I don't even have a clue what my people, most of my people do, um, unless we're just having a good old conversation. Um, yeah. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we literally don't get any income information whatsoever. Wow. No so doubt. Have you have you done some fix and flips yourselves yourself? I have. I have a live project going on right now in Detroit. Oh, nice. Um, okay. I, and I, I completed one just recently, uh, just outside uh, English Village. Um, okay. Um, and uh, w what um, I do, what I did with that one is I you know, we purchased a home um, to show to just show the class how to do it. Yeah. And I, and I use the same means that I did because everybody mm -hmm. qualified for it. Um, and uh, got it. There's, Okay. So with that, that, that's awesome. So, you know, when you're analyzing a property, you know, Hey, it says, Oh, it's only going to be $10,000 to, to fix and flip this hot. Like really, like really a carpet, a, a straight carpet painting ain't going to be 10 to 10 grand, <laughs> you know? So it's, uh, you know, kind of going from there and, and kind of, you have experience with all that. And I think that's for, for new investors, having somebody like you come in is actually a, a, a secondary barrier. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, some wholesalers will sell you on the dream. I try to be as realistic as possible. Okay. With my numbers. Um, but you know, some people will like, Oh no, it's only going to be 20 grand. That's it. And you look at it and, and you look at the photos, you look at this and your lender, whoever it is, if they're a good lender and they, they underwrite the property very well, they are a barrier because they do not want you to lose money. Okay. If you have to come through and say, oh, it's going to be an extra 20 grand. They know that it's got to come out of their pocket because your funding's already set for this. Yeah. You know, there, there are safety, there, there's a, there's a safety, a certain amount of safety net, you know, they're the, having a lender, you know, right. And, you know, lenders are going to require a whole lot of things. And like, they're going to require that you get a title policy without exceptions. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you get a warranty deed and, you know, they're going to, you know, those things are so important. And a lot of times people will fight for the lender to approve it a little bit too much much to their own mm -hmm. chagrin later on, you know, it's going to, yep. it comes back and they go, Oh man, I wish I hadn't, you know, maybe I shouldn't have pressed so hard to do that. And um, because lenders there, they are protecting themselves. So if they're saying no, they're protecting you too, you know, yes. uh, in a lot of cases. Yeah. And as new investors, you need that extra protection. Okay. So anybody can be talked into something in the moment, but you got to come down to the brass tacks. You've got to come down to the numbers 
And you have to understand what strategy you're going to do. As a wholesaler myself, I have to know all the strategies because I got to know who my end buyer is going to be. And what's funny is, is that like I've had a property where I know it's a buy and hold for a buy and hold investor. Like the numbers don't make sense for a fix and flipper. I get that. So I try to advertise it as buy and hold investor. If you're looking to park your money here and get some cash flow, here you go. You know, that takes away half my buying pool because it's not a fix and flip. I only can deal with what I got at the moment. Sometimes I try to do my best to negotiate as down as much as possible, but I only can do so I, I do my best. Um, you know, so I, but I still get people, oh, you know, I, I, I so I ask them, I'm like, what are you going to do with the property? Oh, we're going to do a fix and flip. Okay. You're going to run your numbers. I know exactly what you're going to be coming up with. Okay. I, this is for a buy and hold investor. But if you want to run them, go right ahead. You know, I tell everyone do their own due diligence, you know, but I give them a little bit of piece of advice in the beginning, you know, so um, because I don't want people wasting their time. You know, that's the thing. You know, right. I, I get my time wasted some a lot, honestly. And I, I've gotten down to a science where I, I I'll spend 10 minutes with you. No problem. And I'll tell you whether it's a deal or not, or whether it'll go further in. And I, 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 I need to do a little bit more research, but I can usually within a few minutes, I can tell whether it's going to be, whether it's something or not, you know, um, just because of my experience. So, um, so with that, what are you, so at right now, um, so we're, we're kind of going to right now, what you're doing here with unstoppable funding, you have a few programs that you're doing. You're also doing this, the, the, the free classes, which is awesome. By the way, hit the links in the, in the description. I, I highly recommend anybody learn about what you need to do. And if you're listening right now and you have questions, ask them in the chat, by all means, we'll get to them. I promise you. Okay. Ask the questions in the chat. We'll, we'll get to you as quick as possible. Uh, but from now, you are, uh, you know, you're, you're working with the private lender. Now, do you get a lot of business where you can pretty much analyze a deal or, or anything like that? Get, get somebody approved within a couple of days? Does it take a couple of hours? Like how long does, say, a pre-approval take for a property? So, um for us, the pre-approval, again, is based on the property. I, I do ask people to give themselves some amount of time to get out. Because remember, we can close in like seven to 10 days, right? Right. Um, so generally, if they give themselves seven or 10 days on a contract to do due diligence, we'll be ready. We'll be almost all done, you know, if we start right at the mm -hmm. beginning. Um, so, I mean, we do the approval letters really within about a half an hour of okay with a person that, and that's awesome to know as a wholesaler because as a wholesaler our properties go like this okay and we tell you when you go under contract when you're you're under assignment okay i want you to do all your due diligence before you sign that assignment okay so if you're looking to buy the property I'm not giving you any due diligence time. I'm giving you the time from when you look at the property until you sign the contract. Okay. So you need to know then that way you can put in your EMD right away. I only, I say you got to put in your EMD within 24 hours. Okay. So on, on fix and flips too, uh, not all lenders offer this, but on program one, um, you know, if you have that situation, we can literally, because it does go through a, an automated system, yep. um, we'll have a decision. And as long as the numbers come in, um, as far as the values, yep, we're good to go. You know, so now, do you, 
work. Um, what happens, uh, so let me explain the process. So the, the process um, for us is that they're going to go out and do an inspection of the property, take pictures, and then mm -hmm. they're going to compare that with your scope of work, all right? Because uh, you're going to give us the scope of work, so it's going to cost this much, and these are all the repairs we're going to do. A construction feasibility person is going to look at that scope of work and say, yep, that's that's what these pictures say, this is what it looks like, and that's going to be enough money to do the job, all right? Then mm -hmm. the two of those get paired together, and then we get a value of what it's going to be like because they get a composite picture of the two. And so that's the piece that ARV that we talked about. You, yep. should, you know, we're I'm, I'm, I'm good at coming up with ARVs, but that's mm -hmm. really where somebody needs to spend quite a bit of time uh, learning how to do, but also have their team, like realtors and so forth, to help yep. them um, get a good idea what that ARV is. Uh, and I can tell you, there's some wholesalers that have a radically different idea of what the ARV is and what uh, lenders, how lenders can see it. And in Detroit, you, you it's a very different way of comping. I'm going to tell you that right now. Absolutely. So the CEO, um, that's his name on, on YouTube. So it uh, says, yeah, telling everyone to limit your homework. So many people are comping blatantly non-deals for homeowners that don't even want to sell and they haven't even spoken to. And that is correct. People, I've gotten so many people. Well, what do you think about this prop? I go, have you had a conversation? What's their reason for selling? Well, if they just get their price, then it's not a deal. You know, so and uh, Dave, uh, David Ruffin from uh, Facebook says, how does EMD work? So on our end, so Ian, earnest money, EMD stands for earnest money deposit. That is when you as the investor take whatever amount you agree upon, okay, whether it be $2,500, $1,000, whatever the case may be, and you deposit, you give it to the title company that's doing the title work. Do not ever give that to the wholesaler, okay? The only way, and I've seen this happen before, is where you give the wholesaler the EMD, EMD, and then in turn, basically, they're going to give you the contract at the original price, which is fine. It means you've just paid them their fee before you closed. That's all. And as long as you understand that, what, hey, more power to you. But if you want everything recorded, you give it to the, uh, to the title company and the title company is everyone who pays out the emd goes towards your purchase price on the property okay it'll also and correct me if i'm wrong that will also go towards your down payment as well is that right that's correct and if you and i can tell you this if you do give the money to the wholesaler and you uh show that you pay that assignment fee and you can mm -hmm. show it um and i mean sometimes the requirements are as simple as a letter from the person that received it says I got the money. Right. Um, and you give that to the title company, we're going to take that assignment price. So let's say, Randy, you, let's say your original price is 90 and you're signing it for 105. Okay. Mm -hmm. The person gives you that 15,000. Mm -hmm. We're going to use 105 to determine a loan amount. Remember, let's say we did 90% of that. We're going to be able to actually loan that person 90% of 105, not 90% mm -hmm. of 90. So, right. So they don't, they're not, so it can make some sense, but they can also put the money down with the title company too. They don't have to give it necessarily straight to the wholesaler. Yeah. When you're first starting off, I always recommend it's in safety. Give it to the title company. Okay. Don't, unless the, unless you've worked with the wholesaler multiple times and you get, you've gotten some trust with them go straight to the title company. Okay. I won't accept in my, I've been doing this for three going on four years now. And I never accepted an assignment fee as an EMD deposit. Personally, I always go to the title company myself, but I do know some bigger wholesalers who do do that. And I'm not saying that they're wrong, but they have the buyer, the buyers that they've worked with, on 10 plus deals and they're okay with that. 
you know. Um, so with that being said, what is, so you're doing the loans right now, you're brokering the loans, um, uh, you know, how long of a term are these loans that you're lending out? And what's the max term that you can go on and say some of the longer term loans? Okay. So I'm going to speak, uh, amongst all my products. Okay. So it's yep. the questions because they're general. So, um, we have six month, 12 month, 18 month and 24 months for fix and flips. Okay. And then for um, what I'm gonna call permanent loans. So those are for one, and I also do one to four family. Um, and I'm just now added also multifamily is another thing. So anyway, mm -hmm. one to four family. Um, and on those, uh, you're 20, tw I mean, sorry, length of time. Um, you need, I have two year, five year, seven year, and 30 year. Okay. The rate difference between the five, seven, and thirty is almost negligible, um, mm -hmm. like a quarter percent, maybe half a percent right now at the most. Mm -hmm. um, the two-year is a completely different loan. It's literally a two-year balloon, and that's uh, meaning that it's due in two years on mm -hmm. a interest-only or thirty-year amortization. And the purpose for that one is to graduate to a, uh, a short-term rental. So it gives you the time to stabilize it, mm -hmm. um, get a short-term um, rental experience so that you can qualify for that permanent loan. Um, I also want to tell you that my DSCR loans, you don't necessarily have to have a lease. You don't have to have them rented out. They can be vacant. Okay. Awesome. So, you know, with that being said, it, it, it's, it's great to see that you're, um, you know, it, uh, it's great to see that you're you're doing this and you're being open and you're doing these classes and, and, and you're doing everything. Um, you know, also as uh, Dave Ruffin asked, are you mentoring at the moment? I am. Um, ab absolutely. Um, okay. And awesome. uh, yeah, I would say to, you know, to tune into my, um, in addition to the weekly class, yep. uh, every morning I have a meetup that's basically a virtual real estate meetup for everyone mm -hmm. people like you, Randy, people that are fixing flippers, uh, people that are just real estate investors, people are just excited about it, never done one before. And also, yep. and we get together every morning, 8.30 to 9. We used to call it Coffee Talk, um, mm -hmm. not call it Insider's Edge. But anyway, it's the same link that I use for my meetings on Wednesdays. And so mm -hmm. everybody's welcome Monday through Friday, um, 8.30 to 9, uh, Eastern Standard Time. I do that every day, Monday through Friday. Forever. Awesome. So with you doing all of this, what's your big vision? What's your vision for the future? What do you see? What's your, you know, what's your goals that you, that you want to get? And specifically, how can our audience here who's listening, whether you're listening live, and I appreciate you listening live, um, or you're watching the replay, what can they do to help? you reach those goals? Well, one, I really want to grow the group and really add value. You know, mm -hmm. so like I'm really trying to concentrate on giving value. And I see that as an extension of my actual business, right? So that right. working with people, you know, getting their, you know, creating this relationship that's more than just, I want your business, give me your loans. It's like, I'm trying to give them consistent value. So I see this as very important to growing my company to set it apart from other companies, mm -hmm. um, you know, that uh, other mortgage brokers, other lenders, you know, we want to be the, someone that, um, a, a trusted source and resource and yep. I intend to grow this as far as I can. So the next step is probably, you know, I've already added uh, a new, um, branch or, uh, region in, um, uh, East Coast, it's called the, uh, we call it East Coast Loans, uh, Unstoppable Funding East Coast Loans. But mm -hmm. my intention is at some point just begin franchising and having that all be part of the whole package. But mm -hmm. what I do want to make sure is that we continue to offer a very good quality product across all of our platforms. Um, we're right. our non commercial. I want, want to take this to the commercial side because I feel like that's also another area that's kind of like the wild, wild mm -hmm. west and just make it accessible for everybody, you know, uh, 
Yeah, there's a there's a lot of people that would love to do something like that with some multifamily, especially here in Detroit. So um, kind of go from there. That'd be awesome. You know, uh, now what markets are you currently in or can you go in any market? All right. So um, so what separates us is that uh, we are not. Um, so I'm not, I shouldn't say I'm not, but some of my products I can't offer in all States. So there's, um, so for instance, I can't offer all my products in California. I can't offer them all in Nevada. I can't offer them all in New York. Okay. I do have some products, but I don't have the full range. Um, Mm -hmm. and what that has to do with different, uh, state laws and licensing Mm -hmm. requirements. And what they consider to be consumer loans, mm-hmm. and so under the consumer loan jurisdiction, well, then they're going to impl- uh, impose some of the same rules that I talked about that would not allow it. So, for instance, the biggest one is uh, see, 20 years ago we could do hard money, and yep, you didn't. Um, and so, let's say you had a fixed income, $700 a month or something, mm-hmm. but you had $200,000 of equity. And you want a hundred thousand alone, you'd say, Well, you know, if you if I don't pay, you just take the house, right? The right. judge decided that well, that's predatory lending because you didn't make any attempt to make sure they could make the payment, so you obviously plan to take their house, okay? Right, and make the grant. Um, for what we do, uh, businesses though are not protected in that way, so that's mm-hmm. why we're able to do we're able to do a few things, um, because of that. But not all states interpret it that way, but mm-hmm. the majority do. So that's why we don't offer. Now, do you care about how new the business is? No, no, we don't. So if they just made an LLC yesterday, you you lend on it. Okay. Yes. Awesome. We just, we, we just can't loan to an individual. So they, but you know, they got it. And because we have to have that separation. It used to be that we could do individuals with a business, specific business purpose. But some mm-hmm. of the states, like Michigan, for instance, changed the law just a little bit, and you have to have an LLC now to do what I do. Got it. Or, or, or well, it doesn't have to be an LLC, but it has to be an entity. Most definitely. Well, I will say this. I will be coming to you uh, when I decide to uh, start doing my first fix and flip. So, <laughs> you Mission <know>. accomplished. <laughs> yes, 100%. Um but with that being said, right now I'm just concentrating on wholesaling, getting as much of, you know, value, giving as much value just like this on these podcasts um, as much as we can through the Facebook group, through the YouTube, for, through YouTube, uh, as giving out as much free content as we can. Um, I will be developing that coaching course as well. Um, so stay tuned on that. And, you know, honestly, in my record, like, if he's offering free classes for, you know, um, and I don't, I'm sure he touches more than just financial, you know, so, you know, Absolutely. check them out and, and see what they can do. And, and if you can learn something from everybody, honestly, that'd be, that's awesome. So yeah, we, um, we, we, yeah. we go through showing how to fi- use legal news to find properties. We go through, okay. Um, you know, different places like land bank, tax sales, um, mm-hmm. clearing title, quieting title. Um, we cover a lot. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah. But it, and we'd love to have people like yourself, Randy. I love, I mean, wholesalers are a very big part of business because a lot of people just don't know how to find them very well or don't have the time. I mean, wholesalers right. have a very important role in what I do for sure. Most definitely. And that's the key is, is, I give, I don't want to call it mentorship at the moment, but like it's essentially kind of is, is when I come across, um, when I come across the, you know, any of anybody who's looking to JV on a deal, I look at that and go from there. So, um, Rana Myers, uh, from the Facebook group, what is the link? It it is in the description. I'm going to do his class. So pull it up and, uh, Post it just in case you're hanging on one second. I'll get it for you. Yeah, most definitely. And there should be a pre- present button down there. 
on, if, if you want to present that um, on your side of the screen, down at the bottom by the settings. Oh, okay. You, you go to present and then sh share screen. All right. But I want to, when I, to, to paste the link, I put it over here in the chat. Is that what I yep. Do? You can put it in the chat. And I'll then put, uh, put the link here. I and mean, if you want, Randy, I do have, you know, if you'd like to see it, um, I do have, uh, I don't know how long your classes go, but I do have a, uh, I do have a PowerPoint on the, on, on one of my fix and flip programs. I have a few things if you'd like me to share, I can. For sure. Oh, most definitely. So, and let's see here. Let yeah, I'll go, I'll go ahead and present if you want. I'll go ahead and share uh, one or two of those real quick. Um, I'll try to cut it down to like five or 10 minutes and go fast. You're out of hour. Yeah. I don't know how long your these go. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Go ahead and see what you can do and uh, All right. go from there. All right. All right. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And, and I just posted the link in, the, in YouTube as well as the Facebook group. So go ahead and check that out. All right. All right. So, so but it does, it should also be in the description as well. All right. So I'm just going to pop in here. So I did want to pull up a couple of things to show people um, yep. real quick here, guys. So there was a period of time before I did the walking when I was taking a bus three hours from Garden City to Troy. And so these are actual mm -hmm. pictures of when it happened because uh, to kind of deal with what I was going through, had to keep good humor and it was a really long trip. So I would take pictures along the way on the bus just to show you some of the history. So you see by the date, that's 2014. And then oh, in wow. 2016, I was doing the walking. And so I would take pictures this seven years ago. And uh, I would walk um, all the way from Madison Heights to Troy and then from mm -hmm. there to Birmingham. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and share the uh, this here real quick. All right. So basically, this is just about what makes funding your flip easy with us, right? Yeah. And um, first thing is there's buckets. There's different kinds of programs to meet all of our different different strengths and obstacles, okay? So mm -hmm. this is just covering that premier bucket. I kept talking about bucket one. And the main qualifiers yeah. are these. Loan amount must be above 100000 which means your ARV needs to be 140000 or higher. So as repaired value needs to be 140,000 or higher for that program. Credit score must be 680 and above. Uh, and it is a soft pull. So they're not going to, um, they are not going to, with exceptions down to 660, by the way. But there, there's no inquiry, okay? Um, will not show on your credit report. And that also requires an AUS under it. Um, how does the program work? We qualify the project, not the borrower. As I stated, we concentrate on the project and the future value of your property when you finish the home. You're going to need to have an entity with an EIN number to apply. Uh, we use the best score of only one member in your entity. So you could have a 580 score, but if you have a friend that has a 720, we're going to qualify in that 720, all right? Um, what else makes this so easy? There's no asset documentation. It means we don't ask for bank statements or other asset information or documentation on most of our programs. There's no income documentation or ratios. There's no tax returns, pay stubs, W-2s, or other. And it doesn't matter what you owe. No as-is value is calculated. Um, so this is really great for wholesalers, Randy, is that there is no as-is value. Because as you might know, if you're buying a home that you're selling uh, that is uh, in a dilapidated state, the appraiser is going to have a really hard time with coming up with a value. There's a big mm -hmm. obstacle in Detroit, okay, a lot of times because you're, they have homes all over the place that are selling for ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and the banks don't know what to look at, or the lenders don't know what to look at, and so if you have to calculate as this value, a lot of times that can trip you up. Um, right. And then we fund assignments and we also do double closes, okay, and mm -hmm. we can also provide the transactional funding if you are doing a double. Close. Double okay. closes can be important, like you're buying it from a bank property that doesn't allow assignments and you're trying to wholesale it. Um, project needs, uh, 
you're going to need to provide the estimated property, the value, and what it's going to be worth when it's done. You provide a scope mm -hmm. of work. I don't need business estimates from um, uh, contractors and all for, so forth. But we're going to take your numbers. You're going to put them on a scope of work, real simple. Tell us what you expect that it's going to cost you. Purchase agreements and any assignments that you might have. And take yeah, pictures. Real, real quick. So the CEO says it's like asset-based lending for commercial and DSR, DSCR for residential. Awesome. So is that right? Yeah. So it's, can you say, say that one more time? I want to make sure I heard what you said correctly. Yeah. So he said it's like asset-based lending for commercial and DSCR for residential. Is that right? That is correct, except for on fix and flips, there's not even the DSCR part. There's no related, nothing, 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 zero, nothing. There's no ratio whatsoever. Okay. So, yeah. So the CEO, um, I really wish I knew your your real name, the CEO, because you, you come in here and you provide lots of uh, questions and comments. And I, I, I love it when you come in here. Um, but I, so... Yes, it is asset-based lending. Uh, the D, the good thing is, is DSCR, you need to show the rental income. Here, you don't. So at least that's what I'm getting from him. Correct. So. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, that, that's different. DSCR means, just so you know, DSCR means debt service coverage ratio. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is the relationship between your monthly payment and your rent. This doesn't use that to qualify. So you Got could, it. and you don't have to do a fix and flip with this program. Well, here's a big shocker. You can buy it just to acquire. You can use it just to acquire property. But remember, the longest period of time for this kind of loan is two years. Awesome. So, Ed, he said his name is Pat, Pat from Connecticut. Awesome, man. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate it. Thank you, yeah, thank you Pat. And uh, so then I, I do explain some of this is, would be a little bit longer to explain. And I do have a worksheet yeah. that would be part of the class. But um, I just wanted to uh, share that with you. And I'm going to yeah, stop no problem. Right there um, and turn it back over to you. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm really glad you were able to share that at least. Um, and anybody who wants to see his class, by all means, we did post the link um, in the chat, but it's also in the, it should also be in the description as well. So, uh, check it out, um, go from there and, and I'm, I'm happy to, uh, have John on here. We've gone a little bit over on time, but that's great because I, I mainly do it to, you know, respect the guest times and he wanted to go at perfectly fine with me. So, <laughs> um, if you have any questions for him, put him in the chat and, we can go from there. We also have in the in the description unstoppable funding. Okay. Um, and you know, we can kind of go from there. So the CEO, uh, Pat, now I know his name. Thank you guys. I'll dive deep. Hope to acquire a loan from a from an East Coast loans unstoppable funding. You know, awesome man. The, so, the, the uh, leader of that uh, group over there is uh, Alfonso Tillman. And uh, yeah. he started out as a mortgage broker that would broker deals uh, to us. So a lot of mortgage brokers actually are my clients and they will right. um, send their clients over to me. Um, uh, you might know like Sean Craig, for instance, you might know him. He does uh, quite a bit with us. Um, and then, uh, but Alfonso started out like that and he said, Hey, I want to, I, I, I think I just want to join you guys now. So he ended up doing that. So, well, that's awesome. So, um, and you know, again, his group is also uh, Unstoppable Funding University on Facebook. So check that out. Uh, and I'm happy to have uh, have you on. And you know what? Maybe we go some, through some stories later on and we'll get you on again um, on maybe some horror stories or, and, you know, so we can learn and, and, and kind of go from there. So I've got to do more of those too. I mean, <laughs> you're – this is, it, it's not all easy money. I mean, there's going to, you know, you're going to expect to have some setbacks when you do yep. this. So you can go into it, know that you're after the the mission at the end and what you really want to achieve for yourself and your life. Um, and you can't evaluate it by one project. Um, it's the, 
it's repeated effort, being consistent, mm-hmm. doing it over, over, over and over again, day, day by day. You know, we'll when I was in my when I was in my twenties, I always wanted that quick, quick reaction. I wanted everything to be done right now. And and now that you know, I just turned forty not too long ago. Uh, it's been six months now. So, but um, you know, I turned forty. I'm like, you know, the thing is, is that it's consistency. If you consistently do something, you're going to get more out of it versus, you know, oh, I'm just going to hit the. I give you an example, hitting the gym. You're, you're, you're not going to go anywhere by hitting the gym for one week. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. Okay. You may lose a pound or two, but maybe. Okay. But you're not going to get any significant work done on, on, until you're consistently working out the same. It doesn't have to be five, seven days a week. It could be three days a week, two days a week does not matter. You will, if you consistently do something, you will gain so much out of it by that. And I, that's the same thing with real estate. That's the same thing with wholesaling. You know, when I tell, when I get a no from a seller, I'm excited because it's just one more no to a yes. So I'm going to end that episode on that. I, with that being said, I'm going to just bring you down. We're going to talk after, after in a moment. All right. Okay. You got so, it. So um, I wanted to say for everyone here, thank you. I really appreciate you coming out. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, you watching us live, giving your feedback and things like that. If you want more from John, by all means, put him in the comments, hit him up and go from there. Let's all do Deals together. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. Damn, what a hell of a view.